Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Bit Workshop. This video is an X-Carve Extras video, just to catch up with a few extra little bits and pieces which I haven't been able to put in previous videos. And in this video, I'm going to cover the replacement of the uh, Z-axis uh, limit switch, because I broke the old one. I'm going to cover the making of a sacrificial uh, board that goes on the surface here. I'm going to mention a little laser device which I've created which allows me to reset the X and Y position uh, according to a mark I've made on my board uh, every time I do a tool change. I will mention a tool tray uh, which I've made uh, to fit in a drawer and I'll describe that to you and I'll also introduce the concept of this dust boot which will be a subject of another video at a later stage. Now I've used Vectrix V Carve Pro uh, to help me create the various things that you'll see in this video. Now the V Carve Pro aspects I will put into a separate video and I'll also be producing uh, an absolute basic guide uh, to V Carve Pro uh, for people who are brand new novices in the CNC world. Now, one of the interesting things I found that if you're controlling the gantry using UGCS, uh, these limit switches, which you've got everywhere, uh, play no part. And certainly in my case, this one didn't, because as I was telling uh, the uh, spindle to go upwards, it just kept on going and it actually broke this limit switch. Now, I went to a shop in the UK, it's called Maplin, and I found a replacement with a roller. It's part number or code number is N97AQ. And it just so happens that this new switch has exactly the right distance uh, between uh, the uh, holes in it so that these uh, screws which are gonna go through go into the same threaded holes in the frame of the X-carve. And that's now on uh, satisfactorily. Probably not my best bit of soldering, but uh, there we go. Well, it's now time to test it, so I'm just going to issue the $H command which sends it to the home position. So there it goes, it's gone upwards, and that's worked correctly at the top here with no problem at all. I think uh, it's a good idea to protect the surface of the uh, main uh, platform of the X-Carve. So I've got here some uh, six millimeter thick uh, plywood, and I've cut it into a square 870 millimeters uh, both ways. And the holes which are in the X-Carve platform, uh, for certainly mine unless it's changed, uh, which are used for the, the screw down fixings, the, uh, the little anchor points that one has, those are at 75 millimeter centers. So I've constructed a very simple uh, file in VCarve Pro uh, that tells uh, the machine to drill a hole uh, in a matrix of 75 millimeter centers, both that way and that way. Now this setup is as follows. I've put a 3 8 of an inch cutter in the DeWalt, uh, and the idea of that is that it will give a, a clearance hole um, in the uh, six millimeter plywood so that I can still uh, use these uh, fixing uh, brackets uh, which are then screwed down into those screw inserts which uh, cover uh, the whole of the main board. Now this uh, blank board is sitting on top of some three quarter inch thick or, or 18 mil thick uh, MDF uh, just to protect uh, the main board of the uh, X-carve. Uh, and what I've done is I've pushed it up against uh, the bottom of this rail here. Uh, and so that should be uh, nice and square. And I've sighted it so that it's not too far forward so that I can get to uh, my first cut with no problem. Well, here it is. I've just put it roughly in place. You can see the general idea of how you would uh, position your workpiece on here. And this sacrificial layer now uh, protects the main board underneath. Now, my prototype dust boot did inhibit the free movement of the X-carve and it led to some whoopsies. And so in order to save any further embarrassment, I'm going to take that strip 
off there so that then gets rid of these cloverleaf shaped holes and then uh, the rest of it will be fine. Now here's my uh, dust boot which I've removed from the machine. Um, now around the outside I used uh, some plastic which I'd cut into very thin sections uh, to, to make it sort of brush-like. Uh, however, uh, I noticed when I was cutting uh, this uh, sacrificial board that I wasn't cutting it quite as accurately as I wanted. Uh, and I wasn't sure why, and, and I must confess at first I discounted uh, this being a factor. Uh, but in reality, if you see now, I'm pushing quite hard, and if the uh, z-axis is trying to push downwards, then the resistance of this stiff plastic was just a bit too much. Similarly, if some of the plastic bits got caught in a hole, then the horizontal uh, force needed to overcome that resistance uh, was getting quite high. And this was leading to inaccuracies in the performance of the machine. If you're doing a job that requires a number of different tool changes, you might be using a, I don't know, a V cutter one minute, you might be using a, a straight uh, cutter the next, who knows what it might be, all for the same job. In other words, the piece of wood is the same piece of wood. Now you're going to have to change cutters at some point. And in doing so, it might be necessary to uh, move uh, the uh, carriage in some way, uh, certainly move the spindle, uh, the writer, upwards in order to have access uh, to the bit. And my thoughts were that you've got to have some way of then putting it back in the right place so that you can then start the next stage of the operation. Now, I think it's fairly easy to judge the height. In other words, the, the Z plane is probably fairly easy because you can eyeball it from here and almost always it's going to be when the tip of the cutter is touching uh, the uh, surface of your uh, job. So therefore it's the X and the Y direction which you need to get right so you can resume uh, from where you left off as it were. So my thoughts were that um, if one had a, a laser pointer and here's a, a little cheap one that goes on a key ring, I've had this for ages, um, and if you were to be able to mount it uh, on uh, the spindle somewhere uh, so that it can then shine down directly down onto the surface below. When you first set up your job and you do the G92, X0, Y0, Z0, the home for the job command, you could uh, make a mark uh, where uh, the, the dot of the laser is uh, on uh, your work surface here. Then, uh, after you've moved everything around, you've changed cutters, uh, you can then uh, get that uh, back into uh, the same position again, ready for the next cut. Obviously, then separately doing uh, the depth, the Z direction. Now, the way I've made this is quite simple. First of all, it's going to fix onto, in my case, two of these uh, little threaded holes which are on the side of the uh, mounting uh, plate for the DeWalt. And then what I did was I was lucky enough that the laser pointer that I had was actually cylindrical, in other words the sides were parallel. And it just so happens, you can probably see, that I've got this piece of aluminium which just takes uh, the laser pointer, uh, you know, it's pushed in there quite tightly and it's not going to move at all. Now, I'm sure most cheap laser pointers are just like this one, and that is when you turn them on, uh, the spread of the uh, illuminated area is quite big. So what I've done is, I've, first of all, uh, I've got this backing piece of wood uh, which brings uh, the whole mechanism out from the side so it misses the dust boot. And that gives me the opportunity to screw uh, something into the bottom. And so what I've done is I've got a little piece of flat brass and I've drilled a tiny hole in it. It's less than a millimetre, uh, it's the smallest drill I've got. So uh, that little um, shutter arrangement, whatever you like to call it, uh, then reduces the, the uh, size of the uh, projected image. And actually you can just move this very slightly uh, left and right 
uh, to uh, make it even sharper still. Now, when you make yourself one of these, you've got to ensure that you've got some adjustment uh, built into it because it's really important that uh, this is vertical to your uh, work surface uh, because otherwise, as the uh, z-axis uh, go, goes, as the motor on the z-axis goes up and down, so this will move. And so you've got to make sure uh, you get it absolutely upright. And that's good there. So that's that spot on. So that now means that whatever height uh, the uh, z-axis is, it's going to shine on the same spot. And you can adjust the size of the dot there. Oh, it's quite large. If I move this over, it's getting slightly fainter, but it's also getting smaller. I've just finished the first part of the tool tray, which is this slot here, which is there to take uh, the spanner inside the drawer, so it's easy to find. Uh, the next part is to change cutters and do the slots for the various tools themselves. Now, the uh, writer has, or the spindle rather, has come back to rest, and if I move you in now, you can see, as I shine the laser down, uh, I had already marked a, a, an X uh, where... Uh, the home position is. I'm going to go ahead and change the cutter. Uh, after I've done that, I can uh, uh, manipulate the machine so that the cutter is just touching the surface of the wood in the home position. I can check that my laser dot is on the cross, and then I can issue the uh, home command for the job and then get cracking. So the cutter's in. I'm now going to uh, move the machine uh, so to the home position. And I do that by using the machine control here, and I can adjust X, Y, and Z. And having a, a wireless mouse is quite useful because I can uh, look here where the uh, cutter is and uh, start making some adjustments. The key one that I need to do now is to get the uh, Z direction right. That's the depth because I'm going to use my little laser pointer here to do uh, the uh, X and Y. Right, I'm happy there with. Uh, my Z direction, so I'm now going to uh, check for my X and Y, and there we go, I've got my X and Y uh, back to where I want it to be. So I'm now going to the uh, commands, and I'm going to do G92, X0, Y0, Z0, G92, X0, Y0, Z0. And so my home position is now marked, I'm now going to file mode. I'm going to look for the file I need, which is the tool slots. I've opened it. And then all I've got to do is press the send once I've got the tool running. The tool's running. I'm now going to press the send. And all I've got to do now is uh, just trim this to size uh, width-wise, trim it at the ends, give it a little sand, and it's done. And there that is, all ready to go in the drawer. And I've deliberately made it a tightish fit because I don't want it moving around. That's it, that's in. And I can put some cutters in there just like this. Well, I hope this video has been useful. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, bye-bye.